Hello everyone, Alpha Soul here and welcome to another video. So today we're actually going to talk about what's been going on within Ashes of Creation and the Ashes of Creation community for the past about week and a half or so. Since, you know, time has passed, uh, the Intrepid Studios has released a creative director's letter. That creative director's letter, you know, came via email, and it's a summary, basically, of what's been kind of going on within the Ashes of Creation community. Uh, and also, Jalon, who is the the owner of the Paradox Gaming Network channel, which focuses on a lot of contexts, some of which is Ashes of Creation, uh, recently did an interview with Stephen Sharif to kind of go over and talk about some things and questions that have been with the community. And if you don't know Jalon, uh, he is a person has an excellent uh you know website and youtube channel that covers you know a lot of basic information and in-depth information regarding ashes of creation that you can go into really you can really dive into a lot of those videos and in general he's a very knowledgeable person if you go to the ashes of creation discord for example and you ask a question in the queue in the question section he's going to generally uh one, be one of the people that frequently answers those questions as well too he doesn't work for intrepid uh, but he has a lot of knowledge on the subject so i highly encourage you if it's interesting to go ahead and check it out now in this video I'm gonna to touch on some of the points that were brought up in there just some of the things that I found interesting and we'll go over that but to start with the creative director's letter now the creative director's letter for those of you who don't know is a really good summary that intrepid studios releases I think it's once a quarter uh, that they go through and kind of summarize what's been going on within the ashes of creation community and the purpose is to kind of catch people up uh, who are not who have not been following the game as fervently as some of us others here. So uh, as a person who follows it, I generally don't get much, if anything, out of it. But um, Intrepid does like to release usually one key piece of information that nobody knew kind of within that letter as a surprise. It kind of, you know, drums up a lot of excitement as well, too. So that's always kind of nice. Uh, and the surprise this time was the fact that uh, the pre-alpha testing that's been going on and the alpha one testing uh, that's going to occur is actually occurring in the fall sometime in the fall we don't know when specifically but the pre-alpha testing has been going on there's been one main test uh, and uh, you know some of the Phoenix initiative and higher groups have been participating in that and he basically announced that another test is going to be coming this one's in August and the um, leader of men group will be added into the testing phase so um basically there are 10 different you know support groups or uh different tiers of support that users could go into when you're supporting assets of creation there were the explorer settler pioneer founder warrior of old uh braver of worlds leader of men royalty hero of the people and avatar of the phoenix which is the highest now everything from braver of worlds and on ha, you know and higher basically for that tier have access to alpha one however getting ready into the testing has been kind of up to um, obviously intrepid's uh, discretion and what they decided on was to allow everyone who had phoenix initiative access to kind of help along with those tests and those phoenix initiative access people are basically i think it's royalty and higher so royalty here of the people and avatar of the phoenix are the three groups that have access to uh the phoenix initiative which is you know a dev kind of communication ground so there's a separate kind of realm for that but anyways so what they basically announced was within that testing group also they're going to include the next tier down leader of men to kind of help out with that uh, so it doesn't change the overall alpha one plan but it does change who will have access to kind of a preview version to kind of help get everything ready for alpha one so keep that in mind so if you're part of that tier just keep in mind that again this is an alpha test um you know so treat it as an alpha test and such try and break it understand that it's not complete it's not ready yada 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 that's what it is all right so, uh, moving on to Jalon's interview. Uh, this was a, a pretty long one. It's over an hour, and there is a lot of information that's covered. Some of it, you know, um, I guess some of it I'm more interested in, and I'm just going to touch on seven points, basically, that I found interesting. One, uh, one thing that was apparent when you heard Stephen talk and answer Jalon's interviews, and I think there was one specific question that uh, Jalon had asked, uh, but what becomes apparent to me is that there are a lot of moving parts within this game and things that are changing probably on a weekly basis that, you know, may make more sense or less sense. And you can see that, you know, this game is still in open development. So, uh, you know, some of the answers, so a lot of the answers that Stephen gives are, are, you know, obviously accurate, but they're measured in the fact that 
that he's trying to remember you know what is the latest iteration doing or what is the latest direction that they're going in uh so yes uh, that really kind of affirmed to me that there really are still a lot of moving parts and systems that are coming online after all it's alpha the second thing that I found interesting was one that had passed my mind a while ago, and I'd actually talked about this with Agelos and Stormlords before, but um, he talked about the decision to take down the photos of the Intrepid members and, and their positions from the Intrepid website, which personally I thought was an awesome idea and something that they should have never done to begin with, uh, you know, within the game. Uh, or sorry, within, you know, the website. And the reason for that is, is pretty simple, and Steven actually touches upon it. Head, or not headhunters, but poachers, basically, right? If you have that information as a company up front and, you know, center, then, you know, there are going to be bigger companies that come along, your Googles, your Microsofts, your Amazons, uh, your Facebooks, that see that talent, and if they need something for it, they can probably offer a package that is more than what Intrepid is comfortable paying for that particular person, so there's, it's pretty easy to poach someone for that. So not having that information readily available for them to do, sure, you can go via LinkedIn, but that's definitely harder to do um, and you know to get a full-on roster as opposed to just going to a page and saying hey you know you've got all these let's see who we can get from this list and off of it so I thought that was a good idea um, you know that you know to restrict that information for it so good move as a company from Intrepid um, the third thing that I found very interesting was banning for buying gold. Now, this has been something that's been around in almost every MMO. You've got uh, gold sellers that are within it, and usually you get, it's a pretty safe bet to see that gold sellers will generally be banned from a lot of games. You know, they ha generally have, you know, uh, throwaway accounts that they'll spam their gold offerings and be able to try and sell people, but um, you most games generally don't go after people who buy gold and it's interesting to see that this game will um, I, I, I understand why especially if the economy is what I think it's going to be somebody who buys gold can potentially shift things uh, it kind of takes away from the game a little bit but it's an interesting stance to have nonetheless now um, and I totally get why they would actually do it uh, the fourth thing that was interesting was the change in stance on user created uh, images i think er early on when they had announced this they had, and they had announced a system basically where uh, players could come in and just like art games they could upload their emblems and things of that nature for like their guild uh you know or uh, a mascot or something of that nature and they could use submit user created items but you know, obviously some people go crazy uh, and will have like a penis on the flag or something like that or something that they know is appropriate, but they like doing it because of whatever. And I think, um, you know, the answer was that, you know, he shifted and they're going to allow player created content. But, you know, obviously with the caveat that it's got to fit within, you know, guidelines and that they don't go like that because they, you know, it's going to start to get messy with bannings. And because it's a, you know, pay as you go kind of game, then yeah. You can see there can be some intricacies that go into there, but it's interesting, it's interesting to see that we'll be able to upload uh, and have our own banners, if you will. I think I got that right, so correct me if I'm, I'm wrong on that one. I, I, I was kind of paying attention on that one, and I kind of wasn't, but yeah. Um, yeah, so the next one is the reason for the delay of the Divine and Military Nodes. So Intrepid Studios has already released a... A summary of what's going on with some of their nodes, right? Uh, like the, uh, I think it was the economic node and the, um, uh, I'm forgetting the, the other one. Anyways, they've released two nodes so far and the other two they had not released just yet, right? And the reason that they gave for it was the, um, the fact that obviously it's constantly in work and they wanted to kind of rethink them. And one of the interesting ones that they gave was the military node and when talking about the military node and that I think their earliest iteration when talking about military nodes was that in order to lead it, you'd have to like win duels and stuff like that, you know, very combat oriented. But of course, when they thought about it, that would naturally tend to to gear you towards better one versus one classes and uh, if you weren't a one versus one class you would probably not stand a chance um, you know at winning that particular node and couple that with the fact that the game isn't balanced around one versus one fighting then you have that problem as well too and so they started you know throwing around the idea of a champion system that they could you know utilize you can deck out your fighter it could fight for you and then that would determine the leader of the military node anyways that's still going on and once they're actually ready they will release the divine and military nodes 
Wars, but it looks like that's still in flux as well, too. Um, next was uh, an easy way to address flagging, right? You know, when specifically for like healers and uh, AOE type classes that throw down AOEs, there's been the the thought that, you know, um, somebody who is able to be attacked would throw themselves into the direction of like an AOE or stick around mobs and when you AOE that area, you would automatically flag and you would be able to get killed basically. And so there's going to be a flag that will determine or a, a toggle basically that will determine whether or not you can choose your heals or your AOEs will affect, you know, targets that have been criminally flagged or something of that nature. And so that will be an option as well. Um, so that was actually pretty interesting to hear uh, and pretty good because there may be some instances where I want to toggle that on and off depending on what's going on. So, yeah. And then finally, the, he talked about that I found uh, the final thing that I found interesting was he talked about um, balancing the hardcore versus casual leveling. I wasn't convinced about that answer just because this is an age old question that I have seen, God, for, yeah easily 20 almost 30 i mean 25 years now at this point uh the balance of the hardcore versus the casual and let's just say that i'm reserving judgment for it right now i i'm not convinced that it'll work because i've heard this same kind of song you you have to pick a street when it goes to the basic problem that i've seen with is this um a lot of games try and balance a person who has a lot of time on their hands, right, and uh, can hardcore level, you know, 24-7 and will no sleep it until they hit max level versus a casual person who's got like four hours a day, you know, they come home, you know, put their kids to bed, you know, um, do whatever they can and then they've got, you know, from maybe eight, seven or eight until like midnight or something like that where they play, they can do that on a consistent basis. And so the attempt to balance those two I really haven't seen any truly successful ways to do that. Uh, now, there are some ways that um, mitigate that. Uh, you know, for example, like um, in some games uh, that were out there, there were like, for example, you could you could only level so fast because there was a resource crunch, right? In like blacksmithing, for example, so you couldn't go as fast as you wanted because there were only a certain amount of resources that spawned you can only grab a certain amount so that was like a hard stop on that for, for something like leveling we'll see I, I could devote a whole video to talking about that so i'm gonna refrain from that let's just say i am reserving judgment that's pretty much it let me know what you guys thought interesting about that video if you got a chance to see it if not check it out again it, the link will be below and uh that's pretty much it all right thank you guys take care of yourselves and you guys have a great day alpha soul out Oh, <laughs>